Hi, card makers. I'm Trisha Morris at Club Scrap in Nina, Wisconsin. Thank you so much for coming to this beautiful noise card kit tutorial. We have a lot of material to cover today because we're going to make a lot of cards. We've got 14 total cards to make. We're going to make six uh, that fit into an A2 envelope and we'll make uh, six of them for an A6 envelope. I'm sorry, four rather and then uh, four more cards that fit into an A7. And these are really fun. I've got a clever formula for these. In addition, at the end, we're going to be making a, a folio or a note card gift box per se, however you want to word it. And then four cards and envelopes will fit inside of this really gorgeous box, which is perfectly great for gift giving. So um, I've got my instructions printed out and um, I'll set aside the beautiful set of three different ribbons we've included in the kit, the four manila tags, and then we also have a, like a healthy bevy of silver music related charms, including treble clefs and the little notes. And um, these are going to be great for finishing our cards. So we'll set that aside. And you'll also notice a very cool goodie in this particular kit. Our page kit members got one too. And um, we don't usually double up on a gift like this, but it was kind of a big, um, a big deal to include this. And I just couldn't narrow it down to like which group got them. So everyone's going to get the ruler this month and you'll notice it's, it's reversed and it's got this uh, craft colored back on it. You want to peel away this protective layer, this liner, and then the ruler will become clear. It's already been screen printed on this side, on this back side. So make sure when you're using the ruler, the, num the numbers aren't reversed or that the spelling looks correct. If you're using it like this, it won't be as accurate as if you use it right side up. So that's the big goodie. It even has a little drilled hole in it if you want to hang it on something or put it in your purse so you can check measurements on the go. Um, but I just love to have this handy. And it's also nice for marrying up with the other rulers to increase the measurement capability. So this is a neat little gadget. Um, if you belong to both clubs, my apologies. I guess there's no harm in having two of them because when you can't find one, then you can find the other. Let's start out with our usual routine. We're going to put the paper in the order in which it will be trimmed. And let's find the dark blue, just one dark blue. And if you're not sure which one is dark blue, find the other blue. And from there, you'll determine which one is the darkest. That's the first sheet we'll trim, followed by the brown. And you'll notice that this brown paper is extremely heavy duty. That's why I've selected this particular stock to be the base of our gift box. Nice and sturdy color. Um, then the ivory, one ivory plain. It's a nice, smooth uh, finish to this 80 pound cover weight stock. And then one sheet of the light blue. So make sure you grab the light and not the dark. And then another ivory and another light blue. Doing this can sometimes uh, keep us from making a mistake by trimming like two of the wrong paper or something and making sure our colors are all straight. Then find a burgundy, that's easy to identify. Another dark blue, another burgundy, a print, which I'm gonna place face down, another print, which I'll place face down. Then we'll find the cut apart that has the two larger images on the left, and these are fully colorable. So if you like to have some more intense color on these images, go ahead and grab your chalks or your markers and, and add your own little flair to these uh, beautifully neutral um, card elements. And then, of course, this final piece that has take a rest on there, we'll put that face down in the stack, flip everything back on over so that the dark blue sheet is on top. And we'll go ahead and get going with our trimming. Grain direction um, on this one does matter, so we'll just check our grain. For those of you who are new to us here, and if you haven't checked your grain direction before, always grab by the center of an edge and study whether the paper droops or if it's very stiff. So this is pretty droopy, but I'll just always compare. That's very stiff. So this means the grain is grain of the paper is going this way, but I want it dipping left to right. And that's what the arrow in the diagram will always indicate, the direction of the dip. So the grain is actually going this way, but it's dipping left to right. And we'll cut at eight inches. And then rotate and cut this piece at nine and a quarter. This is going to end up being the lid to the box. I'm going to set this on top of my score pal so I can score it later. Then take this two and three quarter by eight and cut horizontally at four. Stack the two pieces you just created and put them in pocket A. 
Now I'm using my guillotine trimmer and the accordion pocket file to keep organized. So pocket A, B, and C designate each set of cards and then D, I'll probably use this for decorative elements and for the pieces used in the gift uh, box. Okay, so we have one more strip to trim. We'll cut that horizontally at 10 and a half and five and a quarter. Made two pieces the same size, and those go in pocket A. Pocket A looks going to be pretty pretty heavily loaded because um, it, we make six cards instead of the usual four. And this is an extra piece. I'll put that in D for uh, didn't use just yet. We might use it later. Now, if I'm going too fast, and if you're new, I might be. <laughs> I very likely will be going too fast. Um, on the settings on your YouTube channel, there's like a little... Um, little uh, tool symbol or a little wrench symbol in the lower right corner of your screen. If you click on that, options will pop up and you can adjust the speed. Um, I recommend either a 0.75 or 0.5 even, and it'll slow me way down. So as we start working with these measurements, just try that and you probably will be able to keep up. And then as you improve at making the cards, uh, you can go at regular speed. <laughs> I'm checking green direction now. We want it dipping left to right once again. And this time I'll cut at eight and a quarter eight and a quarter we'll rotate and cut it nine and a half and this is the base of our lid so I'm gonna or base of our box rather I'm gonna set that on top of my score pal for later and we have this narrow strip it's two and a half by eight and a quarter let's cut that at seven and a half and three and three quarters these two rectangles that are the same size Go on pocket A, and there is a little brown scrap for pocket D. And then we'll take the remaining piece, trim at 10 and 5. Stack the two rectangles together, pocket A, this larger piece, pocket D. Okay, we have an ivory, and I'll just check grain again. We want it dipping top to bottom. And light blue, check grain. Both of these papers are cut the same way, so we're going to cut them at the same time. If you don't feel comfortable with that, just do one and then do the other, no problem. But these are some pretty easy cuts. We'll trim at 11. And then five and a half. Rotate this piece and cut at eight and a half. This is going to be a card base, both of these, so I'll put that uh, on the pile to be scored. This is going to be a panel for card set C. We'll repeat, so we're going to trim this horizontally again at eight and a half. We've got some more card bases here, set aside to be scored, pocket C on the remaining two panels. These strips, put them in pocket D. We can probably use those later. Okay, another ivory. Check your green direction, make sure it dips easily top to bottom. And then same for the light blue. Again, we'll trim these at the same time, dipping easily top to bottom. If you're if you're wondering why are we worrying about this grain dipping, it's because eventually we're we're gonna take these pieces and fold them. And if we can fold with the grain, then we avoid the crumpled fold. If you've ever seen a paper folded against the grain, it crumples and looks all wrinkly. But if you fold with the grain, it's gonna be a nice smooth attractive looking fold okay so let's cut this at ten and a half and six and a quarter and we're gonna rotate and cut at nine that gives us the base for our uh, a6 card set those two aside to be scored this long skinny piece pocket B and there should be a four and a quarter by 12. We'll trim that horizontally at 11. Set aside to be scored. And then there is going to be uh, two small strips. Those get placed in pocket A. Finally, this strip will cut horizontally at 11 and a quarter and five and three quarters. Place the five and three quarter inch piece in pocket B. The other one is a little narrower. These two, these are only five and a half inches long. Those go in pocket A. I'm sorry to tell you, that's that's an all-out scrap. I'm not even going to put that in my accordion pocket. I'm going to throw that away right now. So that's out of the way. Okay, turning the page now to page three of our trimming. Okay, we're moving on to this burgundy. 
check to make sure it dips easily top to bottom. Same for the dark blue, also dipping easily top to bottom. And my favorite thing about this coming formula is that we literally turn the, these two sheets of 12 by 12 into what's needed to make a total of four A7 cards, which is really hard to do. <laughs> and, I'll, and you're going to see the, the magic of this in a little bit. So let's go ahead and cut it seven. And then we'll rotate and trim at nine. Nine. So this is a large piece aside to be scored. And then we have the long rectangles here. We'll cut horizontally at four and a quarter. Both the larger and the smaller panels go in pocket A. This entire piece gets set aside for scoring. Now take the other burgundy and make sure it dips easily top to bottom and the print also must dip easily top to bottom and I'm just gonna I don't know if you, if you happen to notice that your burgundy is just a hair larger than 12 inches it was uh, there was a technical difficulty with the massive trimming uh, guillotine, like the huge one um, at our offsite uh, facility. So uh, my apologies to you for that. I, I, I like my 12 inches papers to be 12 inches, but in this case, at least it aired on the side of larger. So if your dark uh, burgundy paper is a little shy of your 12 inches or a little generous of the 12 inches, just go ahead and cut it ahead of time. Okay. Now we're going to cut this at six and a quarter. <laughs> And then let's rotate and trim at 11 and 3 quarters and 9. These two pieces will be scored and these will just be uh, trimmed a tiny amount at horizontally at 6. Pocket B. That leaves you with some tiny pieces. The long ones we're going to keep and the short ones we're going to pitch. Okay, next. This long strip will trim at 11 and a half, 7 and 3 quarters, and 4. Take the 4 inch pieces that you just put, made and put them in pocket B. The other four panels should be the same size, a little bit narrower. Those go in pocket C. And we have two more little scraps. I'm going to save those in pocket D. I believe we end up using both of them. Okay, now for this final print, you've got your darkest blue area here and your light blue area here. Brown is on the lower right. And we'll cut at 11 and a half. Six and three quarters. Grain direction did not matter in this case. Now, we're going to rotate. And I'm going to put the pink on the right. And let's trim at ten and a quarter. Eight and a half. Six and three quarters. And five. Now rotate the five inch piece so it's horizontal and trim at three and three quarters. Place this in pocket A and pick up the other rectangle. We're going to trim this horizontally at four and a quarter. Place this larger piece in pocket A. This is a scrap. Now we should have a pretty big pile of narrow strips. Those all go in pocket C. Then take the next strip. We will place it in the trimmer so it's kind of upside down. Blue's on the left. And let's cut this one at nine and three quarters. That's nine and three quarters. Seven and a half. Five and a quarter. And three. Rotate the three inch piece so it's horizontal and cut it four and a quarter. This piece goes in pocket A. This is a scrap. And then you should have a bunch of rectangles, They're long and skinny. All of them go in pocket C. 
Finally, we've reached the point where we can trim our cut aparts. Now, if you are a stamper and would prefer to stamp your own sentiments and images onto your cards that we're about to make, have at it. You know, get the stamp set, ignore all of this, but still use this particular paper. So what you would do is follow along with the trimming and filing that we would do, to do now. And when it comes to decorating the cards, turn it over to the plain side and stamp your images on this. That gives you total flexibility with the advantage of all the pre-planning that we're doing right now, which is kind of neat. Okay, so I'm going to place this in the terms of the word celebrate is on the right. And try to follow those hash marks. That puts me at about 10 and 3 quarters, and I try to always make sure these cuts land on the nearest quarter inch. All right, let them pile up, and we'll slide down to 8 and a half. We'll file all these pieces together. And then all the way down now to 4. Lining up those registration marks with the outer edge of my blade, and hopefully you have you can see those pre-printed on your cut apart. Rotating will remove wishing you many joys first by trimming at ten and a half, and then sliding down to five and a quarter for these larger panels. Now this is going to be on the lid of your box, and this is going to be on the inner base of your box, which is kind of cool. So let's put that in pocket D for uh, that gift box. And then wishing you many joys goes in B, B as in boy. And then we can pick up the next piece. We'll place it in the trimmer so happy birthday to you is on the right. And we'll cut at 10. And seven and a half. Five. And two and a half. So you just created Four rectangles that are the same size those all go in pocket C and then you'll have the happy birthday to you, happy birthday to you with this little wing <laughs> so I'll remove that by trimming at three and a quarter happy birthday to you goes in pocket A and then this goes in D for we'll see about using it then life would be flat without you's gonna go in put our little bonus on the right and trim that off by trimming at 11 and five and a half I'm guessing yep five and a half Okay, these tall pieces end up in set B, and another little bonus or scrap, however you want to look at it. Now this last one, I'll put it in and celebrate on the right. Uh, that was, I'm sorry, a ten and a quarter-ish. It's going to be a little bit off. It's going to be actually ten and an eighth, and the reason for that odd me uh, measurement is that this fits perfectly onto the manila tag we've provided, so that's why it had to be sort of at that odd measurement. So this is going to be at an even measurement, eight and a quarter, another odd one, six and three eighths, and finally four and a half. All right, wishing you many joys. This is going to go in B. And just to note, A, both of those, celebrate B, both of those in B. My apologies, there's one more uh, half inch scrap. I'm going to put that in pocket D. Um, all right, so here we go. We're going to put the You're So Special on the right. The Forte symbol will be on your left. First cut is nine and a half. And again, if I'm going too fast, just adjust the speed to like 0.75 or 0.5, depending. Slide on down to seven. And then last cut in this direction will be four and a half. Rotate, so take a rest is on the right. We'll cut at 10. And we're going to follow that same uh, as before, seven and a half, five, two and a half. All right, I'll gather up the four that are the same size. Those all go in C. And this, of course, needs a little trim. Take a rest, pocket A. And then we have this uh, fun little uh, treble clef image here. That's going to go in D. It's going to end up on the top of our gift box. Okay, make sure that skinny bonus is on the far right, and we'll cut at 11, 8 and a quarter, 5 and a half, 2 and 3 quarters. Gather up the four pieces that are the same. They're not quite squares. They all go in pocket A, and then this is a scrap. Now, another piece here. We'll put thinking of you on the right. Trim at nine and three quarter. And again, you don't have to worry about the number if you just want to visually line up the, the nearest 
registration mark, but this is at seven and a half and three and three quarters. Okay, so these florals and then the sort of rectangles, they all go in pocket A. As I mentioned, tons of stuff's going into A because we're making six cards of that style. All right, here we go. I'm so glad you're in my life on the right, and we'll cut at nine. I'm guessing six, yes, and three, nine, six, and three. All of these, wait, I take that back. You're so special and you deserve it. A, these are innies. Happy birthday, and I'm so glad you're in my life. B, oh my goodness, <laughs> I think we finally are finished with our trimming. Whoa, that was a lot of trimming, but so worth it. 14 cards and, and a gift box, seriously? Uh, we didn't really have too many scraps either. I'm going to set my trimmer aside. And let's grab the score pal. I've got this huge pile of stuff here. Now, I just kept a big stack because I like to do all the trimming at once and then all the scoring at once. It just is right more efficient. So basically what I do here with this pile is I get my instructions and I work from the last step where there's scoring required to back to the front because I know that what's on top here is going to match the very last step of my instructions. I hope that made sense. So the burgundy in the print, it's at six and a quarter by nine. Um, what I usually do now that I score, I have used this, this tool a lot, is I score two pieces at the same time. And um, today I'm using the large point of a stylus, uh, or you can use a, a bone folder. I recommend one or the other over the plastic piece that comes with this. I like to use an actual bone folder, which um, I'll show you. This is, this is my favorite guy right here, but you know everybody's got their personal choice. And then I put the print side into the score pal, print side up, and we'll score it four and a half. So either you would use this, and if you want, you can make two passes, or you can engage with this guy, one or the other. And then I've got two really well scored pieces that end up in pocket B. Then we have this gigantic piece. It's already 12 inches long. This will be scored at two and a half, and I'm doing both pieces at the same time. If you don't feel comfortable with that, no problem. Do them one at a time. And nine and a half. These will go in pocket C, and I'll put them in there at an angle because they're 12 inches wide, which is the same width as my little organizer here. Then I have this other odd size. It's seven by nine. So place it in the score pal so the nine inch side is up against the, the scoring bar here. And we're gonna score at two and seven. And maybe I'll make a second pass there. Two and seven, and this is pocket C. Next, this is a four and a quarter by 11 in light blue and ivory. We'll score horizontally at five and a half. Pocket A. Here we have a ivory and a light blue. It's six and a quarter by nine. We'll score horizontally at four and a half. Gotta go in pocket B. There should be others in there just like it. And we have a five and a half by eight and a half, which I'll score at four and a quarter. That's a horizontal. It's placed in the score pal horizontally. And we'll repeat that for the other pair of ivory and light blue. Same thing on the horizontal at four and a quarter. And pocket that in A. There should be two more. Let's see, these, oh, we really have to pay some close attention. Good we're doing it last. All right, so we'll start with the brown because we're working backwards. This is step two. This is so important, and I'm telling you that I didn't do it right on my first sample or even my third. I <laughs> finally caught my error, so just don't be like me. Uh, just do this carefully along with me. All right, so the first score we're going to do is at seven eighths. So I have this in here horizontally. We're going to score at seven eighths. Now I love my score pal eighths because I can easily count one, two, three, four, five, six, seven channels or one little spot to the left of the one. That's where we're going to score this bad boy at one and at, at, sorry at seven eighths. And then at one and seven eighths. So the same thing we're going to go one column to the left of the two and that's one and seven eighths. Now only rotate one time, so now you've got a short edge here, the long edge here. We're going to repeat those numbers just this one time. So 7 eighths, 1 and 7 eighths. That's it. Now, on this next edge, so this is, the, this is one long edge up here, I want you to score at 3 quarters. 
and one and three quarters. Rotate, score it three quarters and one and three quarters. Now doing this saves you from having to score at an, a sixteenth of an inch measurement. So I'm just trying to be nice. I know it feels like I'm making it hard, but I'm really, by doing this, I'm trying to make it easier. What we really want is a nice uh, tight fit for the lid. So by making a little adjustment on two of the sides, I can get that tight fit without having to have you cut at a very weird measurement. Okay, now we have the blue, the dark blue. This is gonna be normal. We'll score three quarters and, and uh, one and five eighths from each edge. So three quarters, and it's labeled right there. Three quarters, one and five eighths. So to find that, I find one and a half first, and then I go right next door to the right. That's It's between a half and between uh, three and three quarters, rather. So one and five eighths is between a half and three quarters. Now rotate, we're gonna repeat. So it's three quarters, one and five eighths. Rotate, three quarters, one and five eighths. Rotate, three quarters, one and five eighths. And I've gone all the way around the merry-round. Okay, so we got scores on all four sides. This is the um, box lid, and that concludes all the scoring we need to do. Next, just take everything out of pocket A, and what I like to do is get things sorted out somewhat by size. So if you just sort of, you know how when you shuffle cards, I don't know if you do that, we play cards in Wisconsin all winter long, so yeah, I'm familiar with how to deal out some cards. And we're going to do something similar, it's kind of it's just like dealing out all these little pieces, all these little parts, um, so that we can make sense of all of the contents of that pocket. Lots of stuff in there. Oh goodness, it's going to be so much fun, I'm telling you. I love this. All right, so like I said, I've been saying six cards. What I'd like to do is deal out all of the, the parts and pieces for all six cards so you know what's going on, okay? I'm going to look at page four of my instructions to determine how we get started with this. So I think the very first cards are have an ivory base. So there should be two card bases. These are five and a half by eight and a half that are ivory. Then the next card base is going to be long, long and narrow like this. It's going to be an ivory and the other one is going to be blue. The next two card bases are the two remaining pieces you have left to light blue. We should have some larger dark blue panels. Those go with the first pair. So I'm kind of doing this in pairs. Then you can find a printed piece. It looks a little bit different because I did change the orientation of that print when we trimmed it. And a burgundy paired with a light blue, which I think I'm going to move over here because that fits better. And then put the burgundy over here for more contrast. Because <laughs> we can. That's, we can do that because we can. And then also it's going to get this pretty panel. We'll add a manila tag to each of these. And then from our tiniest members of the group are just a note. And then for the inside, we can do a thinking of you and thinking of you. Those are all the pieces for those first two cards. Next, we'll do a long strip in a light blue, and then there should be a long strip in an ivory. So that kind of switches things up a little bit. And then we have a dark blue panel. There should be a nestable that's brown. Another dark blue panel with a brown here followed by Take a Rest, Happy Birthday to You. And on the inside, we'll have a You Deserve It and a You're So Special. Yay! Then we have the larger brown panel going with the brown, or the light blue, rather. Oh, this print goes with this light blue, card number four. Let's take a tall, dark blue. <laughs> Not a tall, dark, and handsome. <laughs> and then we have this print on the side, a burgundy this this smaller light blue piece is here. That's what I thought. So swap that out. Make sure that you have a smaller light blue that nests with this. So here we have this burgundy should fit right onto the dark blue. A lot of pieces here, my friends. Here we have a dark blue up there. How about a happy anniversary, a note of thanks. 
wishing you many more and I appreciate you so much. Wow, that's a lot of pieces, but these are gonna make some beautiful cards and there's no doubt about that. Set aside everything but maybe this one right here and we'll just go ahead and assemble. So the first thing you always need to remember about these score lines is that you, you wanna find the, the bump of the score and put that on the inside of the fold. So just always make sure that your corners line up nicely. Now one of the things I did to add a little interest to my card was ran this through an embossing machine with a music texture folder. So I'll show you the finished sample has the texture. And that little touch adds a lot. So even if you don't have a music folder, but you have something else with some sort of a texture, I encourage you to go ahead and emboss that just to give this a little bit more depth. That's entirely up to you, not required, so I'm not gonna do it for this card just so that we can kind of get a feel for what's, what's gonna happen next. And what we need to do next is attach some of these panels together. And this is the part where this handy ruler comes in, especially at this little size is perfect for card making. So I'm just gonna make sure that when I attach this light blue strip to the burgundy panel, I'm gonna rest my ruler on the edge of this um, burgundy panel about a quarter inch from the edge. I have adhesive on the back of this so I can rest it along the edge of the ruler and drop it in place. And then I know my strip isn't running up or down hill. The same is true like this. I can probably eyeball the placement of this larger blue panel. If you wanted, it's only an eighth of an inch reveal. You could put the ruler on the edge of the card an eighth of an inch from the edge and rest it so that you know it's nice and straight. So then if you want to center this, you're going to find a half an inch from the edge. Zero center would put me at two and five eighths. One, two, three. And if I lay this down, I'm nice and centered there as well. So you get the you can see the advantage of just being able to be confident when you finish your cards that you know they're going to be nice and straight. Now for this piece, it's totally optional, but if you wanted, you could take some club scrap earth ink and one of our uh, ink applicator brushes and just edge this a little bit. You could also take a paper distressing tool and fray the edges if that's your preference. You can add really add a lot of life and dimension to these if you wish. And then I'm gonna place this so it kind of extends past the edge of the burgundy panel. Same with the Just a Note. You can make real quick work of this. And the manila tag as well could use a little edging just to warm it up. Okay, then how about some blue ribbon? I'll cut a little more than I think I need because when you thread through, it tends to take up quite a bit of ribbon length just to get that luggage tag <laughs> ribboning. So you pull the ends through from the front to the back to get the loop kind of in the front of the tag and then shove those ends through the loop then separate and trim those ribbon tails so that they're nice and fresh. Oh well, went through the wrong side, doesn't matter. <laughs> okay, now we'll go just a note on top of the tag. If you were around last month, our members received these handy um, foam adhesive circles and what I love about them is they come with a pull tab so that you can simply pull back the backing without having to spend a lot of time hunting for the edge of your um, liner. Okay, so we'll take this bad boy and put him kind of in the lower corner. Isn't that lovely? Now you can see the difference between what the embossing did. I also swapped the colors, but it still is a, just a beautiful card either way. Very simple, but nicely layered. Perfect for anyone. And lastly, we'll add the um, thinking of you to the inside. And one on the take a rest card. I think maybe I'll I'll talk through the remaining ones because I believe that there, there's nothing too complicated that you can't uh, comprehend. I mean, the, the assembly of the cards is basically the same. So this is uh, the the two just a notes like what we just did together. 
on the take a rest, I reached into the D pocket and grabbed the little skinny strip of burgundy paper scrap, just trimmed it to five and a half inches, nested everything and made a bow, kept it very, very simple. Another option would be to add texture to this uh, blue strip as I did in the happy birthday card. So here I added texture to the ivory and then I strung ribbon around it before I attached it to the card. I also sandwiched this a little differently. So I started with the large printed mat, then a dark blue mat. Then I added this with the help of my grid ruler to keep it nice and level. And then added the remaining two uh, mats. So this is just nicely matted card. It opens horizontally. On the remaining two, I've got a clever um, bow that I think I'm gonna quick show you. So let me get to this uh, panel ready and I'll show you how I did that clever little looped bow. For this, you'll need ribbon and the scissors and some tape. And I will make a loop, just a single loop. And remember to just check your ribbon grain. What way does the ribbon want to fold? And make sure you cooperate with that. And I'm just going to make a, a full loop. And I'm placing the ribbon at the center of my panel where I want it to be, plus allowing about another inch. And then I'll just trim. And then wrap it around to the back and tape the ends in place. Ta-da! So that's what you got. <laughs> Very exciting, right? Then you take the same ribbon, or you could use a different one if you wanted. That would be kind of pretty. Just grab a second color and thread the end of the ribbon through the loop you just created. Since we always source a double-faced satin ribbon, um, this is a win-win no matter uh, whether you get the direction of it right or not. Okay, then when you pull, bring the end around to the back, trim the tail, and secure with tape. That is gorgeous. Mm, mm, mm. I love that. So when you add a note of thanks to its little nest, so of course I would have added the ribbon last, and it looks beautiful. And then you get the sentiment goes on the inside of the card. So the happy anniversary and the note of thanks also had some texture added to it with that um, music embossing folder. Totally optional again, or use any texture you have just to add a little more life to it. Next, I'll take everything out of pocket B and sort it by size. And you'll also want to turn to page five of your instructions so you can view a visual of each card and then we'll distribute our card bases. So our first card will be light blue, then ivory, followed by the print and the burgundy. So you only have to make four cards this time. Then we'll have a burgundy panel, a printed panel. Yours will be blue like mine, not like it was in the image because again, I adjusted the way we cut this to have a better outcome. Um, okay, then how about a narrow blue strip going across this one and a ivory strip of the same size going across the other one. Each one of these gets a tag, so there's basically two styles here. And then on the bottom ones, we're going to have a larger ivory panel with a nesting burgundy and life would be flat without you. On this one, a larger light blue panel with a lovely printed panel. And you're not old. You're a classic. There we go. Okay. Um, looks like we have the celebrates for the tags. And then on the inside of this one, it's wishing you many joys on your special day for both of those. Here we have, a, I'm so glad you're in my life and happy birthday. I think I will show you the first card in the set. And then um, on, the, on the third and fourth card in this set, I just repeated the same double looped bow that I showed you earlier. To review, find the bump and bury it inside your fold. If you wanna take a bone folder to burnish the crease, that's great. Another great move here would be to add texture to this uh, burgundy panel, which is what I did in my final sample, but for now we'll just keep it simple. And oh, before I add this, I need to do a couple of things. How about we ink the edges of this sweet celebrate so fast? And then the manila tag will do the same. Perfect. And we'll go ahead and nest that. I added a treble clef. To this, first I took some wax linen thread that I just had in my stash and uh, a tied bow on top of the treble cloth. That's completely optional. And then used Club Scraps bookbinding glue and a needle tip applicator to 
adhere this charm and you always want to do that step at the very very end so that you don't you can just set it aside and let it dry meanwhile i also added some of this beautiful burgundy ribbon to the top of the tag now what i did was just estimated a length of ribbon to go from the reinforced hole in the tag and about an inch past the edge of this burgundy panel so I can shorten this. I want to try to get as much of this gourd. This is a beautiful, uh, it's a grosgrain edged granulated taffeta ribbon. And I think it's my new favorite. I don't know. I adore, I adore these beautiful ribbons. I spend a lot of time selecting the colors and making sure we get it right. So that's all you're going to do with this. Okay. Next. I'm just gonna try to get rid of some of this adhesive that I put on here too soon. Earlier we created a scrap from our print and so if you want to grab that out of pocket D, I'm gonna go ahead and just lay this scrap on this strip and trim it to fit. Ha. That's all that was needed. To attach a strip like this I'll use my uh, book binding glue again as I mentioned before, the same thing for the treble clef. And I want to place this right on the edge of this ivory strip and all it really does is add some nice color to it and then I will use my grid ruler to assist me in attaching the strip to the bottom edge of the panel I'll just go with like three eighths of an inch up from the edge that handy little ruler I know I'm going to be using this a lot then we have the celebrate now if you happen to have more of the um, foam adhesive circles I believe that yes that is what I used when I attached my my manila tag to the cart so I'm going to put these circle the circles on the back and remove the backing and position the celebrate right onto the panel the ribbon going out to the left and I'm just putting it within that colored area now I've got this beautiful ribbon here so all I need is a piece of tape allow the ribbon sort of crisscross so pretty and secure them here and all I need to do now is center my panel onto the card base so even though my ruler isn't quite as long as my card it's not a problem I simply know it needs to be a half inch from the edge on each side so I can still determine that easily with the ruler and now I know my panel is perfectly centered on the card such a beauty now here's the difference oh, of course then you would add your treble clef the reason i added wax linen and thread to it is just draw a little more attention and here is my finished sample with some texture in the background and then the treble clef added with the bookbinding glue beautiful here's the second sample of that style same exact construction and then when i created the remaining two cards i did that double looped ribbon with the grain edged granulated taffeta <laughs> that's a mouthful and here are the two treble clefts just simply glued into place so I applied the book binding glue and put the the loop of the charm hidden behind the loop of the ribbon empty and organize everything from pocket C and then turn to page six of your instructions our first card is going to be this deep burgundy and then the dark blue notice that the card pieces look very different from each other then we have another burgundy and a dark blue so this formula that we trim from just one 12 by 12 or i'm sorry two 12 by 12s rather will make um two vertical cards and then two horizontal cards i'm going to go ahead and rotate these so each of these taller cards will have two uh, panels one for each flap and then these smaller cards will have also have two panels, one for each flap. So you just decide what panels go where. This one I'm going to put a print with an ivory. Here I'll do a burgundy with a blue. Here I'll do a print with a light blue and then a burgundy with an ivory. This card proves our friendship transcends social media with clearly you are very special to me. <laughs> I love that. And then happy having birthdays is your forte with have another great year. 
Sometimes music is all you need to make you feel better. Thinking of you. And then happy birthday, tr troublemaker. Have fun on your special day. So that's every last piece that we've trimmed specifically for set C. I'm going to stack these up and show you how these come together. It's very, very simple. Starting with the card base, identify the bump and fold and note that the flap will not reach the center of the card. That is totally okay. That's part of the clever card design. Next we have these pretty little panels. So I'll check to make sure the music is right side up. If you have your music background, looks like this is the way that goes. This will go here. It's already looking kind of nice. <laughs> and then we have a larger panel and a smaller panel. So what's important to remember here is that you see how they nest? But the large panel will nest onto the right side, the right flap only, and the small panel nests on the left flap only. So to center this with the small ruler, we're only concerned about being a half an inch from the printed panel on both the bottom and the side. So now the ruler is placed a half an inch from the edge, and if I just align this, I'm a half inch from the bottom, half inch from the right, that means I'm also a half inch from the top. And now that panel, this panel is centered on the right flap, top to bottom and right, okay? Then you can close the left panel and apply adhesive to the left edge of that panel. If you wanted to, you could have added texture to it or ink the edges. And all I did was visually layer it so that there's an equal reveal on top, right, and bottom of the initial panel. So left flap opens, right flap opens. Cool, right? So then we can just choose how we want to handle this. We can uh, maybe take some of this pretty, I love this as a, like a silver pearl ribbon. And I'm just going to go right around the panel, the upper half, and do a simple knot. Real easy whatever you're in the mood for. And use my fabric scissors to trim the tails at an angle. This juncture you could, well after it's attached, the final embellishment would be, if I can pick this up off my table and then without dropping it on the floor, just add this guy. Make sure the note head is on the left side of the stem. Because, and if you don't read music, a music lover will look at that and think that's weird. So make sure that it's situated like this. You can put it right by the bow so it looks like it's hanging from the bow and then attach this any old way to the, the ivory panel. And so I'll just go ahead and attach this panel. I'm going to go upper right. And then open, and here and we'll go lower left, just for something different, just to bring the eye to another place. What a beautiful card, right? Oh, I just love that. Now, if you wanted to, you know, because when I did, did my sample, I decorated it or with, with some texture. You could maybe add, you know, a, a scrap. You could make a little leg you could there's some bonus elements in here if you wanted to like doctor it up a little bit you could do that you know whatever you want to do just use what you have there's plenty of um, little pieces left over that you can um, zoom it up a little bit that is card set C the other structures go together the same exact way um, again there are two vertical so this is the second one like what we made together with the texture added to that front light blue panel just like the texture was added here. Then on the horizontal cards, you just simply, you know, bury those bumps of your folds, bring them in and attach it again, half inch reveal, top, bottom, right. And the left flap goes in. Here's some uh, texture with a real simple, simple knot. In fact, I just had a, such a small amount of this brown ribbon left. That's really all I could do is just, so you have a small amount of ribbon, just make a knot in it and cut the ends decoratively and adhere it to your project. Here's the other horizontal. So beautiful. What a great option for making a A7 card with much less paper. Now the last piece of the puzzle here is the box. And this is can be relatively easy provided your scoring and trimming went, went well. 
And as I mentioned, I did uh, make an error. If you feel hesitant about going ahead and making the box right out of the gates, maybe you want to trim papers of the same size and practice. I don't know. We, we'll be fine. Just follow along with me. Take your time and turn to page seven of your instructions. And I, ha what I hope is a very a helpful visual aid to tell you what parts of these pieces get removed to be help us be successful in the making of this pretty basic box. Once you learn this box, you can make them again and again for these note cards. This, I really have these measurements worked out. So um, copy and use this, please. That would make me so happy. <laughs> okay, so I've got my scissors and basically what I like to try to do is think in terms of just always keeping your piece vertical. So don't start rotating because if you, yeah, sometimes people make a pinwheel, I call it. Um, so just try to maintain your uh, lid and your base in a vertical position while you're working to compare with the vertical position of the sketch. Okay, so the first thing I'm going to do is add a dart to the second score line from the left, the second vertical score line. I'm going to add the dart going all the way up to the second intersecting score line. So a dart is basically like a narrow V. And I'm going to remove this. This is the dart. Boom. I'll do the same thing on the other second score line. Starting at the edge and going to the second intersecting score line. Now I have two darts. Then I need to remove this corner. So it's both of these scored squares. They go away, but I also want to remove the score line itself. So I'm going to angle up toward the second intersecting score. And then from the side, I'm going to angle down a little bit. So I'm removing the score line as well. That frees this area of some of that excess paper that interferes when we're trying to assemble the, the lid. I'm going to do the same thing here. I'm going to angle up toward this corner and stop when I reach the intersecting score. And then come in from the side to remove the whole corner and then a little bit more. Okay, so it's not quite a rectangle, it's like a weird shape, larger rectangle. So I'm still vertical, and I'm going to just turn it completely around so that my two tabs that I created are at the top. I'm going to add my darts into the second score line, reaching all the way up to the second intersecting score. If you would like to draw your cut lines with pencil, before you begin, there's nothing wrong with that, and none of this side, the raised area, the score none of the bumps of the scores will be visible so if you want to pencil that in first go right ahead so now do you see how I have two tabs coming this way and two tabs going this way sometimes students will rotate the paper and they'll have one tab going this way one this way one that way and one this way and then the assembly will still work but it's just not quite as easy as long as we're doing this step, I'm going to do the same thing with the brown. So this is total review. I'll do my paper scissors here. Adding the darts to the second score from the edge. And if you want, you get you really used to it. You can remove the wide corner at the same time. Add my dart. I've made so many of these boxes, and I'll be honest, because I've made so many mistakes with them. So I've really got it down. I'll rotate. Add darts. and then remove the corner, a wide corner. Add a dart. And remove the corner. There, okay, when you're making the lid, we're gonna do something special if you want. Do you see the little thumb hole? What that allows you to do is just grab the lid and separate it from the base very easily. So, to add that, I'm gonna show you how to do it. First thing I always like to do is, you know, we identify what we've got going here. This I would call flaps, and then these little guys at the end are tabs. So I'm going to fold along the scored lines on my flaps just so my piece is ready to work with. And I'm just sort of finger creasing this. I'm not using a bone folder. I think my fingertips are dirty. <laughs> I'm leaving fingerprints on everything. Oh, I'm gonna have to distress this. Okay, so now I'm gonna put adhesive on the outermost flap of what I would call the long wall. So you can tell, this is longer than this. So this is a long wall, this is a short wall. Add adhesive to the outer flap of the long wall only. 
and fold it over onto itself. Then if you happen to have an envelope punch board, place that folded edge into the punch at four and five eighths. I'm gonna confirm that measurement. Yes, four and five eighths should be the center. And you're gonna punch through both layers, okay? I'm gonna flip it now. Here's the other folded edge. Four and five eighths and punch. I've removed that and now I have my thumb hole. If you forget to do it at that juncture, it's not ideal to try to do it after, <laughs> after you've done anything else to make this box. Um, so remembering that now is always a good idea. And you only do this with the blue or the lid, not the base. An alternative to the envelope punch board is a one inch circle punch. So you could also bring it in so you're, you're halfway up. You would mark the center and then just take a half hole or half circle out of it. That also makes a nice thumb hole. So there's two alternatives for you. Now, what I'm gonna do to finish the box is bring my tabs up and apply adhesive only to the outer flap of the short wall. So bring up the long walls to form the side of the box. Then take one short wall flap, bring it up 90 degrees, and then wrap the flap around the tabs and there you have three sides finished. Now tuck in those tabs, you'll turn them in at a 90 degree angle. Bring the short flap up at a 90 degree angle and wrap it around the tabs and press to secure. And there's your beautiful box lid with some black fingerprints on it. <laughs> I think it's from my ink pad, I'm gonna put that away. Oh, opportunities for, for embellishment. Okay, this is much the same way minus the thumb hole. So again, um, it's a little weird. You're gonna have this shorter edge here, but it's all part of the plan. So please don't worry about this, this flap being a little shorter. Remember, we've got our long walls, our short walls, and our tabs. So the first thing I'm gonna do, again, is put adhesive on the outer flap of the long walls and just Turn it over onto itself. Next, I'm going to bring up those tabs. I'll put adhesive on the outer flap of the short wall, but don't stick it yet. Make sure you turn in the tab and bring up the short flap up and over so it wraps itself around the tabs. Do the same thing on the other end. So I'll kind of tuck those tabs in a 90 degree turn, bring that short wall up and over. Then you say a little prayer in hopes that the lid fits perfectly onto the base. And the angels sang hallelujah. <laughs> okay, finishing up, um, we've got a couple of items in here that I want to point out to you. From my scraps in the D pocket, I have a dark blue and brown, both of them larger. This is totally optional. And if you trim them, you'll be able to, to mat the treble clef beautifully. You would also have in your scrap pile a long piece of burgundy. So like, let's say you use this piece for your lid you can trim this to, this to the right size, mat your treble clef with these, ink the edges and so forth. And here would be what the finished box will look like. I attach this matted piece with foam adhesive circles. Then on the inside of the box, you can take the remaining piece and place that inside. This is the right side up way for the music at least. Um, that would go on the inside of the tray. I sincerely hope you enjoyed this whole card making process. I hope you had some fun in the midst of all the learning. I hope you did a lot of learning as well. If you like this collection, be sure to join me over at the Beautiful Noise page kit tutorial. We're going to learn a lot over there too. So I'll see you there.